Do you want to know what I really wish I had known before I hit menopause? If I had known about these pitfalls ahead of time and known what to do to avoid them, I definitely would have. So today I want to share with you some problems of menopause. And trust me, they're horrible. But if you know about them ahead of time, there are things you can do that'll make your menopause experience way easier. And I'm gonna share all of that with you. Trust me, I learned the hard way after some truly awful experiences. I really wish someone had told me about this. And I wanna save you from having those awful, embarrassing experiences. And actually your perimenopause experience too. So stay tuned because these tips can make a big difference to your menopause experience. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I'm Rena Hedeman, professional certified coach and founder of Thrive After 45. It's so great to have you here. Whether you're new or not, please come say hi in the comments and let me know what you've been going through lately, good or bad. I love reading all your comments. They mean so much to me. And I try to respond to as many as I can. Okay, let's get into it. I'm going to tell you the five things I really wish I had known before I hit menopause. But just quickly, I want to make sure everyone's clear on the difference between perimenopause and menopause. Because this is related to my first important tip for you. Perimenopause is when your female reproductive hormones start to decline until eventually you don't get a period anymore and your child rearing years are officially over. That happens over time, anywhere from just a few years to 14 or even 15 years. And it can start in your 30s and in some cases even your 20s. But for most women, perimenopause starts in their 40s. So as I said, I'm Rena. I'm almost 60 years old, and after 14 years in perimenopause, I officially hit menopause just five months ago. You might not know this, but menopause isn't official until you've gone 12 consecutive months without a period. So technically, you're only in menopause for one day, on day 365 without a period. And then after that, you're considered post-menopause. Okay, so 14 years in perimenopause? Yeah, that's a pretty long time. And honestly, I had almost every symptom that's possible in perimenopause. For some of us, perimenopause is way more than just hot flashes too. You see, in those years leading up to menopause, your hormones don't just go down in a smooth straight line. No, they go up and down like crazy, which creates total mayhem in your body and brain, which can really affect you both physically and psychologically. This video is actually not about that because I've talked about those 100 symptoms of perimenopause in a lot of my other videos. I'll link those at the end of this video, so if you don't know what can happen in perimenopause or what to do about it, you should definitely find out so you can get the support you need. And that's tip number one, and I can't overstate that enough. No matter where you are in your perimenopause journey, get the support you need. If your doctor can't or won't help you in this area or doesn't seem to know enough or just kind of blows it off as something you just have to deal with, find someone else, preferably a healthcare practitioner who's been trained in women's hormonal health and really gets it and knows how to give you the help and solutions you need. So that's number one, get the proper support you need, preferably before you need it. The second thing I wish I had known a long time ago, especially if you're experiencing a lot of perimenopause symptoms right now, is that it does get better. I mean, yeah, there are definitely some embarrassing and problematic issues you have to deal with after you hit menopause. And that's what I'm here to warn you about and give you tips on how to decrease them or maybe even avoid them altogether. But post-menopause, there aren't nearly as many issues. For most of us, those horrifying symptoms of perimenopause like hot flashes, night sweats, depression, fatigue, and the 99 others, for the most part, they go away, or at least they decrease naturally. At least they did for me. And on top of that, another great thing about this phase of life, I don't know, I feel like you just kind of hit your stride, you know? For those of you post-menopause, do you agree? I mean, there is such a knowing that comes at this stage of our lives, you know? And it's so freeing. You have such a greater sense of who you are, who your true friends are, and you know what's important to you, and you just don't give a shit about what people think. But back to menopause. 
Yes, there are some really annoying problems, and some of them are just downright shocking and exasperating. But all in all, you're in a much better place, I think, physically and mentally, than when you were in perimenopause. At least that's been my experience. But for those of you who are postmenopause, I'd love to know what you think, so please share in the comments. Something you say could really help someone else in our community. The third thing I wish I had known about, and for me this happened once I hit full-blown menopause, but it practically happened overnight, and that's painful sex. One of my best friends had mentioned it once briefly. I had asked her how her marriage was going because she and her husband had been going through some rocky times. And she said, oh, things have been much better lately. We're doing really well, actually. Our sex life isn't great, but everything else is. And I said, oh, why not? And she just said, because it hurts. And I remember thinking, oh God, I'm glad I don't have that problem. Well, a few years later, I suddenly thought, OMG, that's what she was talking about. So I'm giving you a heads up about that now so you know to keep lubrication on standby because at some point you're gonna need it, trust me. When you hear the phrase dry vagina, that's a polite way of saying sex can be really painful, so definitely use lubrication. Oh, and there are also moisturizing vaginal suppositories you can buy without a doctor's prescription. There are many kinds out there and I haven't tried them all, but I really like these. I'll put the link in the description if you want to try them. They're natural. Also, if you go to a doctor who's trained in women's hormonal health early on while you're in perimenopause, then you might not even experience painful sex at all because you can get a prescription for vaginal suppositories, which contain a very small amount of estrogen, just enough to help the skin down there not get quite so thin, which is what causes the pain during intercourse in the first place. And trust me, you definitely want to dodge that bullet if you can. It really caught me off guard, and believe me, it is not fun. The fourth thing that happens to most of us after we hit menopause is stress incontinence. That's when you pee a little when you cough or laugh or sneeze, or even exercise. Some of you might have experienced that after childbirth, unless you hit a C-section. Another thing is urgency incontinence. That can suddenly happen because of declining hormones too. That's when you suddenly have to go to the bathroom really badly, and if you don't get to a toilet like within 30 or 60 seconds, you just can't really hold it anymore. So you leak, or worse. You wet your pants. Ladies, this happened to me on vacation in Paris, and it was the absolute worst. I told the whole story in this video if you want to hear what happened. I don't know about you, but I always thought incontinence just happened to old ladies. You know, women in their 80s and 90s who need diapers. Well, I hate to break it to you, but no, it happens to a lot of women in their 40s and 50s. Your friends are probably just too embarrassed to admit it. I swear, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But if you know about it ahead of time, and I have no idea why doctors don't tell us this, there are things you can and should do before that happens so you can avoid it. First off, Kegel exercises. If you don't know what those are, they're basically exercises to strengthen your muscles down there, aka pelvic floor muscles, so you don't leak. I actually went to physical therapy for my pelvic floor, and honestly, if I had known how important strengthening your pelvic floor is, I would have gone a long time ago because lowered hormone levels naturally make those muscles weaker. Now, if you can't get to a physical therapist for pelvic floor strength, Google pelvic floor exercises for incontinence and be disciplined about doing them. I promise you'll thank me later. Another thing you can do that really helps ward off both stress incontinence and urgency incontinence is the vaginal estrogen I mentioned earlier. It's really just a very tiny amount you insert into your vagina twice a week. I do that in addition to Kegels, and it's made a big difference. No more leaking, no more urgency, no more horror stories on vacation. Okay, the fifth thing that happens postmenopause is more frequent urinary tract infections, UTIs. UTIs typically occur when bacteria enters the urinary tract through the urethra and begins to spread in the bladder. Bacteria may take hold and grow into a full-blown infection in the urinary tract. After menopause, a decline in circulating estrogen causes changes in the urinary tract, and those changes can increase the risk of UTIs. And you know, if left untreated, a UTI can cause permanent kidney damage and even sepsis, which can be fatal. So instead of waiting until you start having UTIs, start doing these five things now to decrease your odds of getting UTIs in the first place. 
One, drink plenty of fluids, especially water. So that means you're gonna pee more often, but that's a good thing because that allows bacteria to be flushed from the urinary tract before an infection can even begin. Another thing, always wipe from front to back. That helps prevent the spread of bacteria from the anus to the vagina and urethra. Another tip, empty your bladder soon after having sex. Also, drink a full glass of water to help flush out that bacteria. Also, try taking cranberry supplements. Although the research on this isn't actually totally conclusive, cranberries can apparently make urine less attractive to bacteria. It can't hurt to try. And finally, don't use potentially irritating feminine products, such as deodorant sprays, douches, and powders, because using them in the genital area can really irritate their urethra. Okay, I could go on and on and on, but I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much detailed information. It's a lot to take in. But just know that I'm here for you. I'm here to take a stand for all women in midlife and beyond. Because I think, okay, not to sound whiny or like a complainer or anything, but I do think that women our age often get overlooked by the medical world, by the magazines, by the business world, by advertisers who always focus on that coveted 18 to 24 year old age bracket, which is kind of weird, right? Because we typically have more spending power than they do. I do think the world is starting to wake up to the power and the wisdom and the value of women at midlife and older. So part of my mission is to celebrate our collective age group, our phase of life. When we come together as a community, we really help each other become stronger. We help each other look better and feel better. We share ideas, encourage each other, and help each other grow. And that's really why I created Thrive After 45. That's what it's all about. So I hope you'll dive into this channel and check out some of the other videos. I'm really trying to make this channel a super helpful resource for women at this stage of life. I hope you'll get active in the comments because that's really where the magic happens. And let me know what topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. I'm here to help you, so talk to me, girl. I've got to say, the women in this community have been amazing in the comments, sharing even their own private, sometimes embarrassing situations and boosting each other up. I'm so grateful for you ladies. You know who you are. Thank you for making this global community so positive and supportive. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I really hope you will. Okay, have a super fantastic day. Oh, and as I promised, check out these videos if you want. People seem to find them really helpful, and I think you will too. See you next week. Bye for now.